Hi everybody, Dan here with No Games for Old Men. Welcome back to Banishers. Last episode, we defeated Old Saul here on the Ceridian's Island and uh, witnessed her passing. Now, we are going to return to the Hunter's Camp and see if we can find Kate now. Now that we now that Antea has the manifestation called Ensnare, that will enable us to bypass the creeping ivy that's been blocking so many of our passages lately. And that is preventing the bridge to Boston from being lowered. So we'll see if this helps us out now. Or if <laughs> so much time has gone by that she has actually made it to Boston. I liked... Well, I didn't like... The resolution of... The fort. What I like is that there really wasn't a good answer there. Everybody did bad stuff. And it was just your, your judgment about who did worse. Uh, have I? That's not going to be a new thing, is it? Dear Evelyn? Yeah, no. Okay, so... There are two more hauntings here in this area as well, but first we really do want to go to uh, up here to take care of this. Uh, I do want to come down here and see what this activity is, because sometimes these are relatively quick to resolve. You know what? I do also want to purchase some, uh, what was it? Seaside Candle. Because some of our out, uh, upgrades require, require that. Oh, this is already max. What am I doing? Okay, so we need silver there. And the decoction requires... A void splinter, that's right. An elite gem. Seashore candles and linen. 28 linen, two seashore candles, and I'll be able to upgrade that. Uh, the wristband is maxed, the amulet. More silver, and one more Scourge Accretion. Oh. Okay. All right, all right. So, let's talk to her. Uh, she likes us. Oh, I did it again! <sighs> Good day, Nelly. All the better for your presence, Mr. McRae. That's all right. Let's trade, Mrs. Eaton. All right, let's. Okay. Uh, pleased to be giving me some seaside candles. Seashore candles. 24 a piece? Holy crap. Uh, how many did I need? Just two, I think, right? So, just go ahead and buy two. And then linen. You don't sell linen. Sincere sells linen. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Eaton. Thank you for your interest, Mr. McRae. So we will have to find him. He is close by. I think he's around the corner here. Not him. Oh, here's the physician who poisoned. Good day, Good day to you too, Mrs. Ake. It's 
So, what's the word around here? Any new developments? That depends. What is it that you want to know? I should really know about thick skin. What can you tell me? I'll not speak ill of thick skin, Mr. McGraith. She is a fine hunter. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know. I should really know about Kate. What can you tell me? She's a good kid. Petulant, especially <laughs> when her sister is involved. And her sister Just. is always involved. Can you tell me a little about yourself? I mean, we know quite a bit me? already. I'm just a cook. I make soup. I feed people. I do my best like anyone. I'm entirely unremarkable. I am uninteresting. I pass unnoticed. Okay, this is not the physician who poisoned her brother-in-law. This is not her. How have you been? Better. All things considered, I note you have not denounced me, yet. Thomas wanted you safe. I've no reason to deny him that. Then perhaps there is something you could help me with. I've had enough. I want out. But if I am to disappear, the King must believe me exposed. Pennington must write London to inform on me. Paris will soon hear it. Pennington cannot know the truth. Oh, he won't. So I have written the letter myself. I need only the captain's seal. Oh, <laughs> give me the letter. Oh, crap. Perhaps I can acquire the seal from the dead captain's affairs. The captain is dead. The crown must know. Or perhaps not. Perhaps it is no longer my business. My, your war is over. Maybe you can win the peace. I'll take my leave, Mrs. Haig. Yes, do that. Forged letter. From Captain Saul Pennington, New Eden, New England. Madam, I write with regret to inform you of the death of your sister, Prudence Haig, found lifeless in the woods. Wow, we believe she picked the wrong berries. As her husband, too, has passed, we shall do our best to retain Prudence's possessions, and if you wish, we will send them to you. Deepest sympathy, Captain Salt Pennington. Pick the wrong berries? Alright, so I'm gonna have to return... ...to the fort, then, at some point. But not now, because... ...we're going for Kate. Go to the bridge. Not going the wrong way. Where's the exit to this place? Okay, here we go. That way we go. Squire Paris's door. Oh! There's a strong spectral presence. Nani? Uh-oh. Shall we? Uh. Well, I did need to talk to him anyway. Talk on it. I was going to buy linen from him. Ah, uh, that is better. That is better indeed. Ooh, if we help him, then stuff will be cheaper. Ah, uh, can't an honest man catch his breath in peace? Now, where were we? Without wishing to pry, are you sure you're well? You do pry. Yeah. I welcome it. I'm not as well as I would like. I blame the setting. English men and English women out here in the woods. It is unnatural. Might I be of help? The man who killed the beast. I imagine you might. I hope you're not about to tell me there's another one. Oh, n nothing like that. At least I hope not. No, my bodyguard is missing, and with recent events, no one here seems interested. It's not like Jane to leave unannounced, and I can't run the store without her. Where to your mind might Jane have gone? If I knew that, I'd tell you. I'm baffled. All these years, she's been nothing but loyal. Tell me about Jane, if you would. 
My partner Jane is proudly Pennacook. I doubt she'll tell her story to some white-skinned stranger. But if she does, she'll tell you the truth. The question is moot. She's not here. With the beast gone, Jane had the fidgets. I never thought she'd have <laughs> My mistake. Fidgets? She spent a lot of time in her cabin working on a map. Foolish of me not to realize she'd use it. He's genuinely worried, but there's something else going on here. I wonder what it is. Jane's map? What do you know about it? Where did it lead? Oh, I must now break confidence and share a little of Jane's tale. You ever hear of the hummingbirds? The hummingbirds are mercenaries. They and Jane share a past. Oh, that's what those for years be emblems are all over the place. I suspect she found a new lead and chose not to tell me about it. I should have a look in her quarters. Her cabin stands facing the store. I'll not object to you searching it. She may feel differently. All right, how much is linen Show me your wares. right now? You'll find what you need, I'm sure. So it's four a piece. If I help him, that'll probably drop a bit. So what's uh can be found in the Harrow's region or bought from merchants. Oh, so I can just find linen out in the uh the wild. So stay put. I'll look around. Save our Please. Money. And thank you. We're heading to the Harrow's soon anyway. So mm. Are we going to rob the man? No. Man, because it's locked. Get out of the way. Move, move, move. I will stab you. Okay. Mm. Okay, fine. We'll do this real quick and then we'll go find Kate. For real. Jane's private journal. Not so private anymore. Those not ill reacted. F those not ill reacted fast, for we knew the sound of war, but we were too few. My father's face was red and scabbed, and he could not rise to face them. The hummingbirds flapped their wings and burned the tents with our elders inside. My father was among them. Most were too sick to fight. Some ran. I fought. In the end, I was forced to yield. I counted the blades of grass as they put the chains on me. I stink still of ash and gunpowder. I stink so long the stink is mine. When her people were sick, the mercenaries massacred them. Of course they did. Cowards. Paris. I hear there is game to be had in the Indian summer grove near Thickskin's camp. I hear further that your Indian huntress is making good use of it. I wish to do the same. My map shows an old hunting tower that would well suit my purpose. Oblige me with passage that your native girl may leave me be, and I shall be grateful. Teddy Shepherd. Shepherd, if I catch sight or smell of you trespassing on my hunting grounds, I shall go to war. Jane. She's very defensive about that particular patch of forest. Like you with the blanket when the night is cold. <laughs> Jane's notes. Paris is hiding something. Check the register in the safe. Key? Question mark? Jane doesn't trust her boss. Hmm. We should poke through the squire's books. Alright, well, unfortunately I have to break her boxes because I see a basket in there. Maybe the key's in the basket. No. Just pirate. Right. Okay, well, let's see. And Taya was out here while I was reading the journal. Let's see if there's anything out here. Or she was just kind of hanging out. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, is that him? Yeah, so while he's out here, we'll do a bit of snooping. Snoop, snoop, snoop. Snoop, snoop, snoop. 
locked chest. I'm not holding that without a key. Shouldn't be hard to find. Letter diagnosis from Dr. Ireton, Boston, 27th of June, 1692. Paris, my dear friend, after our numerous and assiduous examinations, I cannot conceal the unfortunate truth. Your health fades inexorably. I fear your days of bold mercantile expedition are over. You must work less, work lighter. Knowing your tenacity, I must insist for your own good. Adjourn all voyages, and if you must travel, preserve yourself. Do not travel far without resting, and never travel alone. If you follow my advice, your chest pain and short breath may find remission. If you do not, you risk a quick aggravation, especially if vexed by life's annoyances. Vexed by life's annoyances. I love the wording of that. Time to put your feet up, my dear friend. You've earned it. Dr. Virtue Ireton, fellow of the Royal College of Physicians. Well, that's what's wrong with the man. No keys here. Uh, nope, those are bottles. Sneaky, sneaky. Mm, I thought I saw something shiny. Alright, so this is locked, but I see this. Can we actually sh is he not going to be like, what are you doing firing a gun in my shop? Maybe that dropped a key. I heard a tink tink. There it is. I wouldn't have kept a key here. You yeah, probably would. Okay, so is this the safe or is it the little box behind the counter? Oh, okay, great. There, the squire's archives. Feel a little bad looking at these. Squire Paris. Paris's register, 1690, May 27th. Acquired 24 bushels of corn from the Pentecost. June 28th, sold 12 bushels of corn to New Eden. July 21st, acquired 210 blankets from F. Boverger. July 27th, sold 210 blankets to the Pentecooks. Oh. Oh my god. Those were smallpox blankets, I bet. And Squire Paris sold them to the Indians, got them sick, then the hummingbirds attacked and slaughtered them. I wonder, the question now though is, was Squire Paris aware that those were infected blankets? Paris had traded with the Penacook, Jane's people. Uh, he knew she had nowhere to go, he thought he could profit from her. Yeah, I don't know. He knew she had nowhere else to go. Did he wish to help, or did he wish to profit? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, there's another thing here. Certificate of indentured servitude. Oof. Um, that's basically slavery, sir. By order of the right worshipful Mayor Fidel Marbury. It is hereby certified that the Indian slave named Jane, having ability sufficient to provide for herself, shall be indentured to Squire Sincere Paris for seven years until she becomes a free subject. We have granted this certificate this 12th day of December in the year of our Lord 1690. Squire Paris bought Jane's freedom. Sort and of. as his bodyguard. That was generous of him. <laughs> right. We should talk to the Squire. Okay, so this is still locked. So it's not the same key. Very rarely does the same key work on two locks. All right, Paris, what's your story? Yes. Don't be impatient with me. Hummingbird mercenaries massacred Jane's people. She likely seeks revenge. Ah, right. You don't seem surprised. You don't seem surprised. Why do you think we came to a backwater like New Eden? She knew the hummingbirds had been here. You intended to help her take revenge? I would have, gladly, if I were twenty years younger. These men, what poor Jane endured. Perhaps she wanted to keep you out of it. 
What else can you tell me? Jane had a cache of weapons in the woods, at the Fiery Grove, as she described it. I suppose she means that the trees there are autumn red. Mm. Arms in the woods, red leaf trees. Noted. Stay put. I'll look around. Please, and thank you. <laughs> he sounds. For somebody named Sincere. Let's try this fiery grove. He really does not sound very sincere. Okay. First, though, I said at the top of the episode that I wanted to find Kate, so we're going to do that. She means to kill the hummingbirds. Yep. No surprise there. Sincere's attitude is definitely strange, and not only for his constant whining. Run, Red, run. <laughs> okay, here is the bridge. We know we have... One of the red, red ones here, and I know there's one down there. So once I bruise the heart, destroy the wisp within its roots. Whoops! Oh, got it. Another one somewhere. I missed it. Okay, there's that one. Is there one down here, perhaps? Oh, up there. Oh, man. Okay. Strange that I didn't see that. Okay. Well, that's alright. Doable. Oh, I missed! Oh, no, I didn't. Quick and precise. Well done. Thank you, love. Alright, any wisps? All right, the bridge is down, finally. My goodness. Oh. A camp. Recent. Kate, maybe. Recent? So she spent three weeks here? She really wanted to be alone. Did she leave without supplies? If she did, she can't have gone far. Yeah, she might have had to flee, leave quickly. Wolf pack. No blood, though. Ooh, yeah, those are big paws. She did drop her notebook. Kate's abandoned journal. I promised I would write no more, as I swore I would speak no more. Oh, shit, she sounded like a, a quiet, what do you call that? 
I can't remember. Anyway. But my thoughts need ink, I fear, to ease my mind. So, my love, forgive this newest broken promise and let me speak in the silence of my journal. Vow of silence. That's, that's, that's the word I was thinking of. She has taken a vow of silence. What I have seen in the woods, my heart cannot endure. Betrayal and rage from beyond the grave. Bones and skulls and fangs and claws. Behind all this, my cold-hearted sister stands. And over the putrid carcass stands my long-lost beloved. How can I mend this? How can Rose mend this? How, can, how have the new smiths fallen? My sister stood before the carnage of her disgrace and did not blink. I hit her, I screamed at her, and I railed against her. She was unmoved. I must go. Our arguing surely puts the camp at risk. Ignorant of the truth, the people watch my tearful rage and fear me. They crave peace of mind, and so do I. The only other way to bring them serenity, they would need to be exposed... The dark, they would need to expose the dark soul of my sister. I'd rather be a coward than throw another victim to the wolves. She writes really well. There's emotion in every word. I'm jealous. Writing's good when you struggle to express your feelings. Red McWraith, you express altogether too many feelings already. Aye, but you like that about me. Ah! Right. Let's find Kate and get her talking. Did she just call him emotional? There's another cabin up here. Okay. Multiple <laughs> paths again. So let's see. Ooh, we have an altar up here as well. Ooh, we got some points of interest. Oh, that I can probably get to now. Yeah. Okay, so that's what's going to be this way. So let's do these. We also have this. Another soul catcher. And how many more of those are here in the dark wood? Woo! Another 18! My Lanta! Alrighty then. Another nest or something over there. Kind of a wrecked dock there. Wait, was there something glowing there on the ground? Oh no, it was just sunlight. That was a little satchel or something. Done. You 
aim for the heart. I'll destroy the roots. Ah, okay. We've got another creeping ivy around here somewhere. Roots are where? Oh, there's one there. Is there one inside, perhaps? This is locked from the inside. Okay, well. Let's see. Oh, there's one. Did I ever mention how good we are together? All right, got it. Yeah. It's always good to hear. Right, so maybe we can hop in through the window here. No, but we can shoot this. Ew, those must reek now, those fish. Unless they're dried. Another locked chest. Bummer. Fish order. Antonia. Charles and his daughter have left. We shall reduce the quantity a little. We would need a box of about 20 fish. Oh, I see that up there, but I can't get up there yet, so there's no point in really shooting it right now. If I get down here, can I get back up? I can't tell if this is low enough for me to be able to get back up. Well, I guess we will find out soon enough. Yeah, that looks low enough. Level 19. Look to me. He dodged her jump. down here except for those crafty oh that is that's what's down here. any others something way over there and there's that That that's uh, that's that path that's here. There's a chest there. Let's go grab that. Cause it looks like that might be an enclosed area. Yeah, it is. Okay. Okay, from here, do I have a view of anything? Soul Grabbers. That was Kate's camp, over there. Oh, okay. 
I'm glad I looked down that little cliff. So, the question is, do we conclude the episode by doing this, or continuing to look for Kate? Up there. Let's go for it. Let's see if we can win this on the first try. Oh, he looks like a not long dead person. Key to the fisherman's stockpile. Ooh, is that what's above me? Probably. Because I will forget between sessions. Do a quick sprint up here to the cabin. Let's see if this is the fisherman's stockpile. Yes! Expiation garment. Hitting an enemy with a post parry grants 20 banish points. <laughs> Strength is weighed down, dexterity is weighed down, willpower is up. Wow, that's that's a drop in just about everything. I think I'll stick with what I've got right now. Oh! Um, hey man! <laughs> I'm right here. I can help. Yeah, yep, I know. Let's see if we can get rid of this guy quick. Wow, level 20? <laughs> cool. That went all right. All right, now that we have unlocked the treasure from the fisherman's cache, now we're going to come down here and see if we can succeed at this. Level 21, though. is a nest. Okay, folks. Well, win or lose, this will be a spectral nest needs to be finale of the up. Unveil yourself. I'm right here, you know. Yeah, 
we're not getting a whole lot of damage on these attacks. Not even the guy I was attacking. Oh, he's got a three hit. Nope. Oh god. You are not dodging far enough away. Nearly. Nice, that got him. Get rid of this guy fast, so... Oop. He doesn't get in the body. Like I do. Watch out. Specs of position. Nope, that's exactly what we don't want. Ooh, just barely. I'm a badass. Good, got it. corner to be stuck in. Can't get four hits on him to get Antia Antea's attack in there. Try this on for size. Okay. Oops! <laughs> Tried to pull up for a headshot. Totally, totally whipped it. Oh! Oh, nuts! I thought we'd uh, knock that guy out of his body, but no. No. Oh, he's really protecting this guy. That was interesting. It's gonna be tough if I can't. Oh god. Oh god, I'm stuck. Oh boy. Oh! Come on! <laughs> oh. oh, I knew that was a. Oh, that was probably an ill. ill. ill conceived idea to go for that, but I couldn't. I couldn't let him... I didn't have time to heal. He would have inhabited that body by the time Red drank his decoction. Alright. Well, bummer. I hate ending on a failure, but we'll take care of this. Uh, we'll take another swing at it next episode. Thanks for joining me. That's, um... Once we get this cleaned up, this will actually be a nice little, nice little area.
Yep. All right. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.